Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, so welcome to the third session of ArcGIS in this uh, lecture series on spatial statistics and spatial econometrics. We will pick up from where we left in the second session. Uh, so one thing I, uh, you know, uh, I forgot to do while I ended that session and that can be fatal at times uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, analyzing spatial data. Uh, so, I did it a little bit on purpose is to save the project. So, we should not leave our chairs after we have spent an hour, half an hour, two hours, often more hours working on these data. So, the screen is exactly where it was, uh, you know, when I left. So, what you see on the screen is the same snapshot. So, uh, I'm going to just, uh, you know, uh, uh, close the measure, uh, you know, tool and I'm going to save the project. Uh, I'm going to save the project. It's saving the project on our on my screen now. It's saved. The beauty of saving the project is that I can now close this and start right at this junction where I left. Let me show you. Okay, I'm going to now close it. Okay, so now it's gone. I go to the folder Gaurav GIS, practice sessions, and here is my project. Under project. You see a 33 kilobyte file, which is SSSE ArcGIS project. If I double click it, it will just start ArcGIS Pro. And now with at the same point where I left my screen a minute ago. Okay, it has started. It's loading map. It's doing everything. Um, it's just loading the same project. Okay, wait for it. There we go. Fantastic. So it has everything exactly at the same location at same point where I left my project okay so I can also by the way take the project file and take it to a different computer let's say my home computer is different from my office computer and I you know I can distribute time between working on these projects the only one thing to be very careful about is that the data location would should be same so the data should be located in the same exact structure as it was on this system right for it to read those data if it is not able to read the data you can actually go out and change the locations and and work with them okay all right so now i have my data again i'm going to now focus on uttar pradesh uh, going forward so here is uttar pradesh the black boundary demarcates the state from other states uh, west of uttar pradesh is haryana national capital territory of delhi rajasthan uh, south is uh, madhya pradesh chhattisgarh East is Jharkhand and Bihar and north of Uttar Pradesh is Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand. Okay. Uh, say for a particular project that I am doing, it is only focused on Uttar Pradesh. Okay. Then how do I work with files when I do not need other files? Okay. For symbology purposes, I want to sort of, you know, draw a map, show my audience, international audience who may not be aware of different states in India. Hey, you know, this is... I'm looking at this northern state of Uttar Pradesh. But then going forward, then I'm conducting my analysis. I don't need the entire map of India. I don't need all the states of India. I only want to focus on Uttar Pradesh, right? So what do I do? So for that, I'm going to now clip the features by the state name. And I'm going to now create files which are only focusing on Uttar Pradesh, okay? So let's try to do that. Let's start with the easiest file, which is the state file. Okay, right click. Okay, I am going to say attribute table. Okay, under attribute table, I have this, you know, uh, this top, uh, uh, you know, tab area where I have field, it says add, calculate, selection, and it says select by attributes. Okay, so I'm going to say select by attributes. And I'm going to say select new selection. Where should I look? I'll, I, you should look at name one. 
and name one, it automatically picks the names of the states and I'm going to say I want to please pick Uttar Pradesh for me and I'm going to say apply and it selects state, you know, uh, the state for me. I can also go to the row and click and select the state. I know that, right? But I'm now, you know, you know uh, 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 selecting by this uh, state. I'm going to say, okay. So once it's selected, it has selected Uttar Pradesh, I'm going to now go and right click on this one, on India ADM1, which is the state file, right? I can refer from my folder. I can rename the file here as well, right? Let me do that just for my, let me rename, uh, okay, I'm going to just click on it. Okay, I can now, uh, I'm going to say states, just for my purpose, I'm going to, before I do any clipping, I'm just changing the name for my uh, purpose. Okay, uh, states, uh, districts, um, and then we have uh, taluks, right, and ADM0, we didn't change it here. Okay, so it's the national level file from Diva GIS, okay. So whenever I make changes, I always save my project. I'm going to just save my project. Okay, now I'm only focusing on the states file. So India states, I'm right clicking and I'm, I'm going to data and I'm going to say export features. I can export features and I can export just the table. That's the CSV, okay. I'm going to say I'm going to export features and it says, okay, you want to export features, uh, you know, okay, fine, output features. Okay, I want to now change the name of the output features. I want to go to the same location, uh, Gauravag GIS, practice sessions, India admin data. I am going to say, I'm going to name this as Uttar or let's say, yeah, I'm going to say Uttar Pradesh, okay. Fr state from Diva GIS, save, okay, and it creates a new layer called Uttar Pradesh state. If I uncheck the India states, they will all go away. I can now say zoom to layer. When I do zoom to layer, after right clicking, what it does is, whatever pane size I have, it just fits the map there. There you go. Okay. It doesn't just do that. It wonderfully also adjusts all the other panes also accordingly. Okay. Now I see Uttar Pradesh and I see all of its districts. Okay. I see other districts as well, but I'm not interested in the state boundaries anymore outside of Uttar Pradesh because that's as an analyst, I am choosing to analyze the data for Uttar Pradesh. I can also change the size of the attribute table and then again do this zoom to layer and see what happens. Here we go. It is, uses the entire space. Okay. So, you know, it's very uh, uh, smart that way. I can actually close the catalog pane again, do zoom to layer and see what happens. Okay. Nothing happens because it's already adjusted its, uh, you know, extent according to the given size of the pane. Okay. Fantastic. So now I have this feature sitting here as Uttar Pradesh. I can go back to my catalog pane, go to my folders, Gauravag GIS, practice sessions, and now I should be able to also see Uttar Pradesh shapefile. The icon in front of this shapefile is a polygon file. Okay. If I go to roads or I go to railroads and I actually drag it and bring it here, you will see these Okay, I can go to its symbology, I can, I'll change its color, just so that we are, we are able to see these are the railroads provided by Diva GIS. Okay, now I can see where the railroads run across Uttar Pradesh, what's the density within each district, I can visualize it. It seems to me there is some important town here because there are many, many intersections uh, of rail rails here. And if I click on World Top Topographic Map India, I will actually know what this location is. Well, it's like now it's the state capital. So of course, the density of railroads was characteristically high in that, in that area, right? Very interesting. Okay. All right. Now, uh, 
if you look at what I wanted to also point out here is that if you look at the icon in front of India Rails, it's actually a line. This is again a vector file, but it's a line form, right? The vector data are stored as, as lines. Whereas data in case of Uttar Pradesh state is, state is a polygon shape. So the icon itself is identifying what kind of vector data are we looking at. Okay. That's that. So I'm going to now uncheck the India Rails. It can sit there. I have no problem with that. I'll make the catalog pane smaller. I'll again zoom to layer, to my Uttar Pradesh layer, so I can look at Uttar Pradesh. It's again still labeled. If I remove the, if I want to remove the label, I could just click on label and it'll remove it. Okay, that's fine. All right. So now, what if I want to clip the districts as well? Okay, so I'm going to go to districts. I'm going to say attribute table. Under attribute table, same strategy. I'm going to say select by attributes. I want to select by again name one. When name one is equal to Uttar Pradesh. Let me do that. Apply. Okay, now it selects everything in that polygon which comes under the name one category of Uttar Pradesh. Okay, I can again go, I can say right click, I can say data, export features, I want to change the name, I want to go to the folders, I want to go to my desktop, yeah. So I can say Uttar Pradesh districts, I am just going to say from Diva GIS, instead of Diva GIS, just make the name a little shorter, I am going to say one, because I am going to show, and show you an alternate path of clipping the features, okay? An alternate strategy of clipping the features. So right now, let's just clip the features with the select attributes methodology. Save, okay? It's saving the features and it gives me a new layer called Uttar Pradesh districts one. If I deselect other districts, the entire country's districts, fantastically, it only gives me, you know, the districts of Uttar Pradesh. Okay, and if I open the attribute table, okay, so the attribute table for India districts had 667, 667 units, that means India, the India layer has 6667 districts as far as this data is concerned. And 75 of those were selected, that means 75 should be the number of districts in Uttar Pradesh. So if I look at the attribute table for the Uttar Pradesh districts one file attribute table, it will in all have 75 units or polygons. So there are 75 districts, I can select them differently, you know, they are all sort of, you know, uh, there to be seen, there is a Methi, that's where a Methi is, uh, that's, you know, that's where Azamgarh is, uh, this is Balia on your screen. Uh, I can also look at some others, let's say Chitrakoot. I can look at Bijnor, which is your sugarcane belt, right? Uh, there is, uh, there is the, you know, there is Gautam Buddh Nagar and Ghaziabad, the two, you know, urban settlements on the east of Delhi, you know, the satellite towns of Delhi, they are, they are themselves districts, right? I have Ghazipur, Fatehpur, Firozabad, Hapur, Hathras, and so on and so forth, right? So, I can now, you know, sort of move across these units and try to locate where they are on my map, right? Okay. Um, within these districts, I may also want to do some labeling, right? I may want to do some labeling. So, I'm, let me just remove the selection. Let me just remove the selection, right? Okay. So, I can go and I can say labeling properties on Uttar Pradesh districts file. I can say labeling properties. Let me label these. Okay. All right. I have my class I want is name two because I want district names. So, I want to remove this feature and I want to say name two and I want to say apply. Okay. I can also go and I can, uh, you know, change the, for like I said, I like Times New Roman. Now, I want the size to be smaller because, you know, I am aware that, you know, there are going to be 75 different names being written in those little polygons. So, I'm going to just make it 8 and I'm going to say apply and I'm going to close this. Going to go back to Uttar Pradesh districts 1, right click, I'm going to say click label. 
there we go fantastic so now if i zoom in a little bit i zoom in a little bit i can actually see all the names of different districts you know assigned to their respective locations okay so now i can see mathura i can see gautam buddh nagar i can see ghaziabad i can see buland shahar i can see amroha you know i can see firozabad i can see kasganj i can see jalau jhansi mahoba lucknow barabanki sitapur lakhimpur kheri you know gonda balia right azamgarh uh, gorakhpur and so on and so forth right so i am able to now visualize at once the spatial structure organization or spatial organization of districts in the state of uttar pradesh right okay so i have done that so i told you when i began this exercise that i'm going to show you a an alternative uh, you know path or methodology of clipping features so what did i want i have you know i have an india level districts file this is an india level districts file here for now we have the selection of by attributes uh, inside uttar pradesh and i have this sitting feature uh, you know uh, 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 which is let's say uh, my polygon within which i want to clip the data so i can go to view and there is something called geo processing something called geo processing right so i am going to click on geo processing and it's going to now you know it's going to give me three tabs favorites toolboxes and portals favorites provide me the favorite features that were probably you know on this system were used many times earlier you know by someone else uh it's like the favorites that i have on this system it's a memory that the software pertains but what is most important for us is this portal this toolboxes right these toolboxes you can see have many many sort of little 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 toolboxes and within those toolboxes there are these sub tools okay now focus on the analysis tools under that we have overlay right uh, we have extract we have pair wise overlay and so on and so forth each of these tool does some kind of manipulation to the given spatial data okay the tool of interest for me right now is analysis extract clip so let me double click okay so it gives me input features what are your input features you can click and figure out what do you what is this all about you can actually click on the question mark and it will give you a very very nice description you know that's why this software is paid right so you have clip which is an analysis tools what does it do it extracts input features that overlay the clip features so i have an input feature let's say the districts file it's a bigger file and then let's say i have a clip feature the clip feature here is the uttar pradesh state boundary such a clip feature can come from some other source as well right i mean you can as an analyst source such features from different you know uh, from a different location for example it may be a river basin right i'll show you in 5 10 minutes i'll show you a india water resource inventory system which is a fantastic again a fantastic you know spatial data set uh, well you have to construct your spatial data sets from there but it's a fantastic data set for for water resources in india right so you can bring in a basin and instead of the state if you want to study with something within a basin let's say the ganga basin the yamuna basin you know and so on and so forth then you may have a shape file a polygon of the shape of the basin right if you want instead to study let's say uh, you know a region which is a climatic region right which is an agricultural region which may be an ecosystem it could be for example the jim corbett national park you want to only focus on the jim corbett national park then you need a shape file a polygon which is externally sourced from let's say the jim the the you know india's wildlife you know inventory uh, areas inventory and they may provide you a you know a shape file for the jim corbett national park so if you have such you know predefined areas of interest or features that you want to da study data for and not everything else inside a state or inside a country or inside a given larger region then you can clip the features inside that area of interest right here my larger region is india's district file and my area of interest is the uttar pradesh extent okay so i'm going to now clip the features and so that they are only contained in that file okay 
So input features drop down will catch all the files in the map drawing order under contents. So I want India districts from Divya GIS. My clip features are Uttar Pradesh state from Diva GIS. Output feature, I'm going to open, I'm going to search for where my, okay, I have districts, I'm going to say this is district two, because this is method two. And I'm going to also say clip, because I'm identifying that I'm using the tool clip from analysis. Analysis, extract, clip. Save, and I'm going to say run. When I say run, it's going to actually run the, 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 the uh, you know, the, the, the module. Okay, it says running and it's done. Now I have Uttar Pradesh districts to clip. Okay, all right. So I'm going to close geoprocessing and I'm going to now analyze the two. I'm going to uncheck the India level file. Okay, I have one now file open, which is India districts two, which is exactly looks exactly the same as India districts one. To visualize that, I'm going to go to symbology and I'm going to change the color of this to green. I'm going to make it uh, thinner, thinner. Okay, apply and close. Um, uncommitted simple formatting. Do you want to uh, know what happened? Okay, so. Uh, something, all right, so here is my, okay, this is Uttar Pradesh District 2, just like District 1, it has 75 features, right? I think I did something wrong with its symbology. Let me go back to symbology. Uh, let me see if I can, uh, you know, I think I, uh, okay, let me do one thing. Let me undo something here. See if I can get my symbology back. Yeah, I get it back by undoing. Let me save things still here. Okay, save project. I'm going to go back to its symbology. I want to change its outline color. I want to change its color. I'm going to say apply. Okay, it applies it. And if I open the other one, which is sitting behind it, and I make it slightly thicker, then I can visualize both. Okay, so now I have the India or UP Uttar Pradesh districts one and districts two files, which look exactly the same, but they were recovered with different methodologies. Okay, so I'm clipping the data, I'm bringing it in, and I'm now I can actually just work with Uttar Pradesh data. Okay, so this is a, a particular, you know, uh, uh, you know, modification that I've done with, uh, with these data. And going forward, you know, the next step that what we are going to do is we are going to look at a points level data. Well, you know, we could do one thing as homework for you guys. Uh, okay, so remember we looked at the railroads. So we could bring the railroads here and you could try to clip the railroads. Okay, what could you do then? Well, you will go to your analysis uh, we'll go to uh, the tools, uh, sorry, we'll say uh, uh, view, geoprocessing, clip. Now the feature that I'm interested in is India Rails. Okay, so I'm going to say one and two because I've opened it twice. So I'm just going to say Rails one, it doesn't matter. Then, you know, the one that I really care about is UP state from, and I'm going to clip it. And I'm going to call it uh, Uttar Pradesh Railroads. Uh, and I'm going to say clip because I am using that function and I'm going to say shape, save, and I'm going to say run. And if I now uncheck, okay, clip completed, okay, done, fantastic. I'm going to close this and I'm going to now remove and now I am able to visualize. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm just going to keep one of them. Let's see. So I'm now able to visualize the districts and the distribution of railroads on UP, right? So you can do this for roads, for inland waterways. You know, we can also look at the attribute table of this and see what the railroads data actually has, the CSV file has. Okay, so it has 
uh, it says it is a railroad, it is operational, it is a multiple or a single railroad, single line, multiple line, right? Uh, India ISO country. It has a rail ID. So you can, you know, if you click select a particular rail ID, it's going to select a particular line. There we go. Right. So it's a join of different lines. There we go. Right. Right. So you can see how these line features are joined together to store information. We can do one, one very interesting thing. We can calculate the length and the area of these units. So let's say we say add field, under field we say add, right? And we can type the name of this field, I can say length. And I'm going to say I want it to be long. I actually like double and uh, this is it. Okay, I'm done. All right, so uh, I can then just uh, close it. Uh, done. Uh, current layer, yes, done, done, done. Okay, I don't want that. Um, all right, so done. Save all changes, yes. So if I apply changes, it's going to add a new field. Fantastic, it adds a new field. I'm going to deselect the one that I had selected. I'm going to zo zo uh, zoom to layer. I right, right, right click on length and I say calculate geometry, calculate geometry. When I want to calculate geometry, I want to tell what coordinate system I'm working with. So I'm working with the coordinate system of this particular one, which is GCS WGS84. And I want to calculate the property, what property I want to calculate. I want to calculate the length, right? What unit of length? Well, I want it in meters, okay? I want it in meters. And then what I want to do is, I want to, uh, you know, say, okay. okay. As soon as I say, okay, what it does for me, it actually calculates the length of each feature in meters. Fantastic, right? So, so each little, 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 little feature is now calculated in meters. Uh, I'm a little, worried that the numbers are very small for meters, um, uh, you know, uh, that would mean that, oh, there are 292 of these lines. They are certainly not meters, even though I asked for it. So I can do one thing, I can go to measure, measure, and I can try to, uh, you know, see what, uh, okay, I need to, okay, 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 and so I'm looking at overall 187 kilometers. So it is giving me 1.85, which basically means I have now 1.85 into 10 to the power two kilometers. So that's how we cross validate the unit that we are using. Sometimes because of the coordinate system or some kind of internal calculations, we may see some of these weird kind of, you know, variables. What we then do is we simply just, you know, uh, 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 you know, we simply just uh, 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 um, cross check using the measure tool. So now I know that the numbers that I'm looking at are just your hundreds of kilometers. So 1.85 multiplied by 10, 10 to the power 2 kilometers. Okay. So what I'm going to do for the benefit of my, my own uh, self, uh, you know, I'm going to try and, uh, uh, you know, rename uh, the field. So I'm going to just say uh, it's, uh, 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 can I just change the name? Uh, it seems like it's going to be a little bit more complicated, but I can rename the field and I'm, I can just call it hundreds kilometers, okay? So that is something I'm going to leave to you that you can figure out a way to change the name of the field which reflects its units also. Okay, so once I've done that, uh, as one step, now I want to, let's say, I want to know, as a next step, I want to know, okay, what is the length of, you know, a railway line within each district? Okay, so I want to do that. I have a separate file which for Uttar Pradesh, okay, both files are for Uttar Pradesh, so I know very well that for Uttar Pradesh, I have, uh, you know, district data. I, I can identify these districts, but I can't tell within Mujaffarnagar what is the length of rail line and how does it compare with the rail line length in Bareilly, okay? 
So for that, I will go back to my analysis, uh, my view, my geoprocessing. Under analysis, I have, uh, you know, this tool under overlay called intersect. Okay, let's look at this tool. Now let's see what this tool does. Interestingly, this tool will basically intersect two files over one another. So what it does is, let's say I, I begin with this feature input and I begin with the feature, this intersect feature. As an output, it gives me the feature being clipped, you know, as, uh, you know, as one, right? So what it'll do is it'll now create polygons by the names of the rail line or the ID of the rail line and the district, okay? So let's try and see what we get. So input features, the first input feature that is the parent feature that I'm interested in is UP districts one. And the second feature that I am interested in is, is UP railroads clip. This has rank one and this has rank two. Rank one is the file which will determine the, the, the extent of the resulting uh, you know, feature, right? I want to retain the districts feature. I don't want to just retain the rail line feature. It can do that, right? I want to retain that and I want to then intersect the two. So let me do that. Okay, so output feature class, I will go and say, I want to stake Uttar Pradesh districts, UP districts and railroads, clip, oh sorry, not clip, intersect dot SHP. I say save. Okay, I want to join all the attributes and I, output type is same as the input, which I want is to be basically a polygon. That's why I've given rank one to the polygon shape. If I give the rank one to the line shape, then the resulting output will be the line shape. Okay, so I'm gonna say run. Let's run this. It's running and it's done very quickly. Now, what does it give me? Okay, I need to close down both of these things and now I see what I see is wonderfully a, uh, you know, a UP district railroad. Okay, what is it that I see here? Okay, so let me now just show you what do we see attribute table. Okay, so let's look at the attribute table. Now the attribute table has 437 units. Why? Because each unit has been now broken down by the by the rail line that lies between that within there. If there are more than one rail lines or rail line objects, line objects inside a district, it's going to now count it as two objects. Okay, so then uh, okay, so uh, I'm going to now uh, look at uh, this thing for Muzaffarnagar, which was my uh, you know uh, something of interest. So let's go to Muzaffarnagar and see what we get. Okay, so, um, okay, um, all right. So now I have my UP districts railroad. I want the railroad, not the district. So, okay, I'm gonna check it. Uh, I'm, yes, UP districts railroad. Now I have FID Uttar Pradesh. This is the FID related to the districts file. Name India, name one Uttar Pradesh, name two Muzaffarnagar. Keep going and then it has FID Uttar Pradesh rail ID. There's one rail going through it, which is a single line and it has a length of 94 kilometers. Okay, so one rail which is going through 94 kilometers. Here on the CSV or the Excel sort of type of format on, on the attribute table, let's close all other attribute tables to focus on this one. Okay, what do we have? We have the first unit is a polyline. So it's a polygon and a line. So it's an intersect of the two. It's a polyline. It is Saharanpur. It has Saharanpur in it and it has a railroad of size 22 kilometers or 23 kilometers. Now, interestingly, Saharanpur is occurring one, two, one second, occurs once, twice, thrice, four, five, uh, wow, eight times. So, Saharanpur was made up of eight line objects that were representing railroads. 
And to see the total size of rail lines within Saharanpur, I will have to sum all of these and multiply it by 100 and I'll have the kilometer length within Saharanpur. Okay, so if I go back to my map and look at the selected area, it will make much more, uh, you know, things interesting for me. So here is Saharanpur and Saharanpur, you know, if I go back to my district file, Saharanpur has all these rail lines. Well, it has more, so, you know, it will show up later as well. So this is not going to be all for Saharanpur then. Yeah. So I'm going to have to see if I can select by attributes and I'm going to say name one on let's say name two. And I'm going to say give me Saharanpur. Apply. Okay, there you go. So now all the rail lines within Saharanpur are selected. And now you can go in and you can actually just sum the, the length for all the selected areas and you will get the length of rail within Saharanpur. You can also export these data by the way. You can export these data, okay, to Excel. So you can say, you can go to Uttar Pradesh district, you can say data and you can say export table. I want to export the table and I want to say output table. Where should the output table be? Let's just wait and see if we can, uh, you know, export it. Okay. So we can say Uttar Pradesh, UP districts, railroad. I don't want SHP. I want a table. Save. Okay. Now it will add a table file, you know, separately for this one. And you can also sort of go to the attribute table click on the three button and here it will say export, okay. You can export this file. You can just say output table here, uh, you know, you will be able to again save the same thing as a, uh, you know, a table. It saves it as a .dbf file. I'm just going to call it two because this is the second method that I have for saving the table, okay. Okay, so it, it adds it here. So if I close this, I will be able to double click and open this table by right clicking open. Here we go, right? So here I have the table, which is separate from the file itself. I don't need the file anymore. I can just look at the table, right? Okay, so that's about it. I'm going to save my work. Uh, in the next class, I'll, in the next session, we will go over exporting these data to Excel and then we will go on to working with the points data set, which is, uh, you know, which will be a groundwater data set, you know, something that you have seen in so many lectures in your uh, theory, theory classes. Uh, you will actually be able to work with those data. I'll show you where to get those data. So the first step in the next class will be to, to take this, export these data to Excel, right, to just take it to an Excel file and then from there on you are free to use it in your any statistical software like Stata, R, you know, Python, whatever you are comfortable with, right? Or you could just work on Excel, right? So which is very convenient, right? Uh, that that will be very nice to do, right? Okay, so let's end it here. I've saved my project and I will start right here in the next session. Uh, and we will uh, go through first step will be take it to the, ex export it to the Excel file. And second is start working with groundwater data for Uttar Pradesh. All right, thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.